continue with uh, and discussing more about the burden of heart failure and um, uh, uh, so the next presenter Dr. Potlori from Birmingham will discuss increasing readmissions to hospital worsen mortality and decrease survival in heart failure patients 15 year study from the U uh, UK thank you so my name is Rahul Potlori and I'm uh, the founder of the ACOM study unit from the Aston Medical School in the United Kingdom. So my topic is about increasing readmissions to hospital worsen mortality and decreased survival in heart failure patients, a 15-year study from the UK from 2000 to 2014. Uh, these are my declaration of interests. And whilst the the uh, title is extremely long. I have tried to simplify it by use, putting in this slide, and it, I think this is a much better title to use, Increased Risk of Death for Heart Failure Patients with Each Hospital Admission. So as a background, hospi ha hospital admissions because of heart failure in the Western world are projected to rise by 50% over the next 25 years, largely due to a uh, result of the aging population. Um, Previous research in Europe has suggested that three months after discharge from hospital, a quarter of patients have been re-hospitalized and about 13.5% have died. Um, in the UK specifically, heart failure places a huge burden on the National Health Service and accounts for a million inpatient bed days and, uh, per year and 2% of the all NHS inpatient bed days and also accounts for 5% of all emergency medical admissions to hospitals. So it's a very, very significant problem. So the reason for doing this research was to ask this simple question. Does each and every hospital admission with heart failure adversely affect the survival of these patients and by how much? This is an area that has been, uh, hasn't been really touched upon in the past. And the way we have done this is from the ACOM clinical data set. And ACOM stands for Algorithm for Comorbidities Associations Length of Stay and Mortality. And it's the algorithm that I have set up, uh, which utilizes routinely available hospital admissions data and, connect, uh, and uh, transforms this into a research database that can be used for both cross-sectional and longitudinal analysis. So for this particular study, we had 457,000 patients above the age of 18, and out of that, 13,416 had uh, heart failure and a minimum of five-year follow-up. The minimum five-year follow-up was essential so that we were comparing apples with apples rather than getting in patients towards the end of their heart failure life into the study. Um, so for each patient, we had data on the number of admissions to hospital and the death during the study period. Uh, statistical analyses were performed to evaluate the risk of death with each readmission. So out of the 13,416 patients, the mean age was 72 years, which is very concurrent with um, other studies on this topic. Uh, with, in terms of readmissions, most of the patients only had zero to three readmissions, with four to seven having some 29%. <coughs> and as you can see from the slide, the crude death rate uh, for the patients who only had zero to three readmissions during the study period was 38 per 100,000, and it jumped to 196 per 100,000 uh, per 1,000 patients uh, from four to seven, and then subsequently, as you can see. Um, a Cox regression model uh, showed that each readmission to hospital with heart failure increased the risk of death by 2%, which was statistically significant. So this is better shown in uh, uh, graph format, and as you can see, as the number of readmissions to hospital increase, the crude death rate increases significantly. Uh, and this is a Kaplan-Meier survival curve, which shows long-term survival in these patients dependent on their number of readmissions to hospital over the study period. And as you can see, the zero to three readmission group does remarkably better than the four to seven readmission <coughs> group. Um, uh, and subsequently, with the more than seven readmissions, they have much worse mortality. Um, what was really interesting was that the mean length of stay uh, in the patients who had only zero to three readmissions was significantly larger, uh, longer than the patients who had much more readmissions. Uh, and this has a story to tell by itself. Uh, 
So what we can show is that readmissions to hospital lead to worse mortality and poorer survival. Each hospital admission uh, increases uh, risk of mortality by 2%. Each hospitalization can result in uh, compromised cardiac function, and this is from previous studies, and suboptimal fluid status, and patients often enter a vulnerable phase where their um, risk of dying in the subsequent period is almost 12-fold. And the reasons for this increased mortality with multiple readmissions should be further explored, but we think, and there's some evidence from the heart failure data in the UK to suggest, uh, audit data in the UK to suggest this is that maybe because of inappropriate early discharge, lack of specialist input from heart failure specialists and teams, and also lack of and delay in cardioprotective treatments, um, i.e. optimization of heart failure medication. So the key messages here is that reducing hosp hospital admissions should be a priority in heart failure management, whether it's the first, second, or 15th hospital admission. And every hospitalization with heart failure should be taken as an opportunity for the clinician to intervene, to optimize heart failure treatment, and to reduce the risk of future hospitalization. Um, and every effort should be made in that specific heart, uh, admission with heart failure to ensure that the patient is fully stable and, that, uh, and, and ensure that they're on all the optimal heart failure medications before discharge. And I think by doing the, uh, following these measures, we, should, uh, we could reduce future readmissions for such patients and in so address some of the associated increased risk of death. Uh, these are the references and I'd like to take any questions. So thank you. For this is an important message in the management of patients with heart failure, the hospitalization, as you pointed out. So uh, you have really an important point. Yes. Thank you, Carl. Uh, as a, as a, as a is a well known this uh, this um, result these findings uh, and this important is confirmed i think uh, i agree with you that uh, we we ne it's necessary that the national health system recognize the importance of uh, patient before leaves the hospital to be optimized uh, treatment at least starting at the optimi optimization because we know optimization may require several several days several weeks I think it's also a call for action, also consider the role of primary care and ge uh, general practitioner as well, because it also is their responsibility when the patient, most of the time this patient were, uh, were at home, where could be taken also their um, action to, to start starting to consider this patient less hospitalized. I think it's also is, uh, is my experience in, in my country, in Italy. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's also the importance of a uh, healthcare provider that, mm -hmm. that the, all the, the, they play the family around, they can play a role in order to um, recognize early when they're starting the patient to instabilize and make call an uh, earlier call for a GP or mm. uh, intervention may reduce also this kind of uh, uh, earlier frequent hospitalization. I don't know yeah. what yeah. you agree. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Maybe, yes, Michelle. Uh, you rightly so suggested that you might have been facing early uh, discharge uh, leading to early readmissions given the length of stay that you reported, but I'm a bit surprised by the rather short length of stay even in the group with the lowest rate of rehospitalizations because it's on average six days, if I understand well, in your study, whereas in Europe in general it's between eight and ten days. So do you have any comment on this? So the length of stay in the UK with heart failure varies significantly from some hospitals report as short as four, to four days and some hospitals as long as 14 to 15 days on average. Uh, and that's a very important topic that you touch on. Um, and it's that variability that needs to be addressed for, by national groups uh, because, you know, to treat a patient fully with heart failure, as you know, it takes a sub, sub, uh, substantial number of days, probably a good part of a week to offload mm -hmm. them, get their fluid status correct, and start them on all the cardioprotective medication. And uh, unfortunately, because of pressures uh, uh, in terms of hospital beds, sometimes patients may be discharged earlier of, for uh, treatment in the community, and <coughs> often treatment in the community is not uh, uniform across the country. Thank you. Yes. 
Peter? Uh, you, you showed us what is the one big worry in this patient. However, we have a need to subdivide the patient in some group in order to treat them better. Are there any differences? in the ischemic and non-ischemic patient as far as the rehospitalization is concerned? So this is a preliminary study and we haven't l subdivided the groups uh, with uh, ischemic heart disease. One aspect we looked at was atrial fibrillation and uh, in atrial fibrillation there was very little difference whether there was presence or absence of atrial fibrillation. But this is something that we need to do. Yes, and, and we, we have the data to do that. It's just uh, it wasn't done for this presentation. Okay, if there are no 